Our nonfiction reader this week is called African Animals. In this book, we'll explore seven different types of animals. Let's look at the table of contents. First page is elephants. The second page is honey badgers. Third, lions. Fourth, ostriches. Fifth, zebras. Six, leopards. Seven, honey guides. And then what's next? Yes, you guess it, as always, the glossary. Let's look at elephants. The largest of all land animals, elephants, live in groups called herds. Even though they are very large, they only eat plants, which makes them herbivores. The mother elephant has an extreme amount of love for her calf. That's her baby. Mother and calf stay in almost constant contact. Mother elephant will protect her calf from predators and the sun by putting her baby underneath her. She also uses her trunk to give her calf a bath. Now let's talk about honey badgers. The honey badger looks a lot like a skunk. The top is actually a skunk and the bottom you're seeing there in that picture is a honey badger. The similarities don't end there either. The honey badger can release a stinky smell if he feels threatened or if he wants to mark his territory. Their long claws and extremely powerful teeth protect them from predators. Most animals stay away from honey badgers anyway though, because they are known for being mean. Look at this guy here. Unlike many other African animals, honey badgers do not live in groups and prefer their solitary status. They want to be alone. Now let's move on and let's look at lions. Besides the tiger, lions are the largest cats. Lions live in groups called prides, while the male lion gets a lot of attention for his size and long mane, that's his hair. The females are the hunters of the group. Cubs or baby lions rely on their mothers for everything. The male lions have an important job too. They protect the pride and make sure the cubs get enough to eat. Now let's talk about a bird. Let's talk about an ostrich. An ostrich is really fast. It can hit a speed of 43 miles per hour, especially when it feels threatened. Ostriches also have great eyesight. Their height and eyesight combined allow them to keep a close lookout for predators. Ostriches live near grazers who stir up insects for dinner. The ostriches return the favor by alerting the zebras, wildebeest, and antelopes of lions who are approaching. Speaking of grazers, here's one right here. Zebras spend most of their day eating grass and plants. They live in groups called herds, but sometimes thousands of zebras come together in search of food and water, and this is called a super herd. When faced with predators, zebras will help each other out and form a semicircle, preparing to attack the predator if they need to. Their strong teeth and hoofs are used in defending themselves against large cats and hyenas. Let's look at a leopard. Leopards are extremely fast cats. They are recognized for their black spots. Leopards prefer to be alone and spend much of their days lounging in the trees. They become active in the evenings when they begin looking for their dinner. 
A leopard will creep up on its prey, and when it gets close, it will pounce on the victim's neck. Sometimes they will even carry their dinner up into a tree to make sure a scavenger, such as a hyena or vulture, won't try to steal their food. Now let's look at our last animal, and it was in our fiction book this week. Let's talk about a honey guide. Honey guides are not only known for leading mammals to beehives, but they also have an interesting way of hatching their young. Honey guides lay one egg in the nest of five or so different birds. When the honey guide chick hatches, it will use its sharp beak to break open the other eggs and eat the insides. The mother honey guide makes sure that her egg hatches first by incubating the egg inside her body before laying her egg. We are at the glossary now, so let's talk about words. The first word is hoofs. It means the feet of animals like horses, zebras, or donkeys. In this story, we saw a zebra. Incubating, what's that? Well, it's to keep the eggs warm so that the animals on the inside develop. Pounce, spring or swoop suddenly to catch a prey. You might have seen your cat pounce before. Territory is the land that an animal claims. And threaten is to feel like one is under attack or that someone is trying to harm someone. I hope you enjoyed reading about all the African animals in this story. What's your favorite one?